Welcome to The Access. I'm your host, Heavy Buzo. In this episode, we'll be discussing the work of the Millennium Challenge Corporation, global poverty issues, and their work in the Middle East. To talk about all of this, we are joined by Karen Sessions, Vice President for Congressional and Public Affairs at the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us today. Uh, you're welcome. I want to start by talking uh, about you personally. Uh, you're a woman who uh, ran for Congress. You've had your own uh, career uh, in uh, different uh, elements within the government, outside the government. I want to know more about you. You're from Texas. Dallas, And your yes. husband is also a congressman who I've had on my show. I've had the pleasure of having him, uh, Congressman Pete Sessions. Tell me a little bit more about you and your work. Uh, sure. Uh, well, probably first and foremost, uh, I'm a mother, and uh, I have three sons and two stepsons, so five boys in our family, and uh, uh, a professional uh, as well, and um, with a, a, a corporate background and now working in foreign assistance in the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Uh, for the administration and as a, uh, I would say, um, wife is a con of a congressman who has a busy schedule as well. We, we uh, just all juggle do it lot. together, juggle a lot, <laughs> and, um, and, and I enjoy very much what I do. Um, I mean, you ran for Congress yourself too, so you have your own uh, background in uh, government and politics. I do. I, I served as uh, a city commissioner, my first uh, role in government, and as a city commissioner and a vice mayor of my city, it was from two th uh, uh, in 2007 until 2010. I both enjoyed the work of governing and particularly in effective government. And I did run for Congress in 2010, uh, and uh, I, I uh, lost by a few percentage points. Yes, only a few points. Yes, yes. Uh, 0.8%, small uh -huh. amount. Uh, uh, certainly could have gone the other direction. But my intent for running for office at the federal level is that uh, my background, both in uh, my professional background as a corporate executive and my education, I'm educated and my background is in finance, I really put those skills to work in effective government uh, at the local level. We had some very strong results and so forth, and I was taking those, those same um, skills forward and uh, ran for Congress in 2010. Mm -hmm. Now you are the Vice President of the uh, Millennium Challenge Corporation. Uh, tell me about the mission that uh, your, uh, the, the organization that you're part of uh, focuses on and uh, what are basically, um, what, what do you think would be the biggest goal that this corporation is trying to achieve in helping third world countries? Well, the Millennium Challenge Corporation is a, it's a unique, uh, small, uh, I'm going to say small but mighty uh, organization. It's a government-owned corporation. Uh, it was established under President uh, George W. Bush as a mission to do more effective uh, foreign assistance, uh, specifically uh, uh, alleviate poverty through economic growth. And what does that mean in which we work that are the, amongst the poorest in the world that can uh, adhere to or pass a certain amount of those indicators? It is uh, specifically designed to have projects to promote economic growth and thereby alleviate poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, a, uh, it's been a role of, uh, that I have in congressional affairs and public affairs mm -hmm. to both understand the benefits of what we do and be able to tell those stories about exactly how we are affecting uh, our mission abroad. Mm -hmm. Are those preconditions that you just kind of named, um, you know, things about like the level of uh, corruption in certain countries, uh, the basically how free the market is, are those preconditions before your corporation, your organization could actually take part in trying to help 
in building the infra uh, infrastructure to uh, better the economy. They are preconditions, uh, and the mission is to be able to construct what we call compacts or investments in uh, the foreign countries. And those investments are designed to incentivize reforms uh, in particular governments to be able to both uh, unleash economic growth and also to have systematic reforms that allow uh, other investments to take place. And let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, half of the work for Millennium Challenge Corporation is in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, the, the countries that have qualified for the particular assistance that we, uh, we provide. And one of the binding constraints in Africa is power. Mm -hmm. uh, utilities uh, may not be functioning correctly. They have uh, not the reg right regulatory or tariff environment. They just may not have the proper infrastructure. There's lots of things that can contribute to that. So just being able to provide uh, guidance, investments, and structure about what has to be reformed for a fully functioning power utility mm -hmm. uh, to serve its people and be able to attract uh, other investments to strengthen the system. Uh, I uh, Probably a, an important point to note is Millennium Challenge Corporation is often the first U.S. government agency into these countries mm -hmm. or into these situations. And again, our mission is to incentivize the reforms that have to take place mm -hmm. in order for uh, a marketplace to develop uh, on behalf of all people. So basically, you see what's lacking. What the, what's the first most fundamental things that need to be there before you can build on it and, and create an actual functioning economy, basically? That's correct. And, and why that is, is so important, of course, is that uh, many times the participation in a functioning economy uh, is absent uh, women in, in the situations in these countries. We, we, I think, uh, all are coming to, to know and documented and so forth is that the higher participation of women in an economy, uh, both for uh, realization of empowerment and just women's rights and other things that are foundational both to, to women and to families, is that having these basic uh, structural uh, economic uh, marketplace, uh, things in place, water and power and mm -hmm. so forth, uh, also uh, it empowers uh, more participation uh, mm -hmm. in these countries exactly. and, strengthen, and strengthens the dem democracies that are mm -hmm. either developing or, or aspiring to develop into stronger economies. And you guys have been working on the women aspect of, of empowering women as part of your, your mission as well. Uh, but, and I'm not going to go deep into this because I want to kind of go back a, a little bit to talk about the fact that, for example, you know, we hear about USAID, uh, other government organizations that have been active and, and working in certain countries, and uh, we hear more about them in the media. This administration has been accused of withdrawing, of cutting fundings to so many different things. Um, are we hearing no, now and learning about your work, which is great, and we're going to go into the depth and details of what you guys have been doing lately, but is it because the administration has basically brought you back to life after uh, having seven, you know, eight years of Obama, uh, where uh, the organization hasn't been as active. Is that what's happening? I mean, you know, tell me a little bit about the history of how things kind of went up and down, and and maybe the the funding or the uh, support from the administration has changed possibly since George W. Bush's administration. Well, it, it, the support it. it each administration's had their own priorities, both in uh, uh, foreign assistance as well as, I would say, national security priorities mm -hmm. as well. And uh, where Millennium Challenge Corporation really fits in uh, to both the effect of foreign assistance and how foreign assistance is deployed and what we do is uh, fundamental, again, I'll draw back to fundamental is there is an analysis about why we want to invest, the reforms that we want to support in certain democracies of the country. Uh, uh, where Millennium Challenge excels mm -hmm. is measuring that, analyzing that, being very 
uh, methodical about where to place those investments. And uh, one thing that I think is unique and interesting about Millennium Challenge Corporation is we're governed by a board. Mm -hmm. uh, Congress gives the agency uh, latitude uh, in the oversight function because we are governed by a board that is chaired by our Secretary of State Pompeo okay. and uh, our members of our board with the Secretary of the Treasury mm -hmm. and uh, the Administrator for USAID and our US Trade Representatives. So we have a very broad mm -hmm. and strong uh, opinion that comes from our board in support of where the investments go uh, for Millennium Challenge. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your latest projects. You've been traveling, um, doing a lot of work. Tell me about your Georgia. I've heard also, I know that Tunisia is one of your potential projects or something that you're working on. Tell us a little bit more. Yes, Georgia, uh, the country of Georgia, first, first thing probably to understand is that Millennium Challenge Corporation uh, compacts are five years long. There's some design leading up to how the how the compact will um, what it will entail and and uh, the outputs that w we expect um, in partnership with the with the foreign government, but mm -hmm. Georgia in particular was an education compact, mm -hmm. uh, and it centered around several tenants. Uh, very interesting. It was uh, focused uh, education and and women especially mm -hmm. in the fields of engineering and and math STEM uh, curriculum. There was a component of the compact that was vocational in nature to be able to put the right curriculums in partnership with the university system and the education system in Georgia uh, to give them that uh, wisdom on how to uh, conduct curriculums. There was another part of the investments that rehabilitated schools. There were over 90 schools that were both either rehabilitated or um, uh, built along the way. Mm -hmm. There uh, Also a strategic partnership was formed with San Diego State University where there was expertise uh, that was shared from San Diego State University mm -hmm. with the University of Georgia um, uh, University Systems mm -hmm. to be able to give accredited uh, curriculums uh, in especially these fields of uh, engineering and, and math, STEM-based engineering fields. Mm -hmm. And then we did a, uh, a partnership with uh, the UN Foundation and an, an organization called Girl Up Mm -hmm. that uh, featured some of these graduates and counselors and uh, uh, women that have taken advantage of this uh, education-based uh, investments in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we're closing in our fifth year of the compact currently. So it's been a five-year investment a with five some incredible year. results. What, how do you see the results? I mean, to you, uh, when you go back to visit and see what happened, what have you witnessed? Well, it, it, the there's our our job, I would say, or our part of our mission, as I discussed, is to attract uh, other investments by by setting some foundational uh, work up. And mm -hmm. in this case, it was education. So we had partnerships in the what was a YSI camp. Uh, that I described with the Girl Up organization and Intel and Microsoft and Google and uh, companies uh, had come in and partner as a result of Your our work. Our work. Yes. So uh, private sector involvement in being able to uh, both invest in these areas and, and bring uh, those opportunities to bear for uh, these women who are, who are in um, the education field there. Uh, and taking advantage of that was uh, foundational. Yes, and then you're working also on Tunisia. We are. Tunisia is under development right now, which means it hasn't entered into force. The work has not started. It's yes. under development and design. But uh, Tunisia has uh, identified as one of the most binding constraints to growth. Is you know what is in our way, what's on our roadblock. Is uh, one issue is the youth, uh, high youth unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, the situation in the neighborhood that the country is uh, surrounded by and, and the issues that are going on, as well as national security issues, is how, how do we uh, invest in those un, uh, unemployed and underemployed youth, which is a, a, a now a, a large number. And uh, again, that's intended 
as a national security uh, objective to be able to support a strong uh, partner in democracy and um, uh, uh, in terms of the indicators. And we have some smaller level investments that we mm -hmm. call threshold investments in those countries uh, because, again, uh, where, where I think the U.S. Uh, and Millennium Challenge can be very effective is developing and supporting these countries to become future strong trading partners for mm -hmm. the U.S., strong uh, uh, national security and uh, uh, democratic partners with the U.S., as well as being uh, having the ability for U.S.-based businesses to have, I'm going to call them safe and effective investments uh, uh, overseas as well, mm -hmm. and those those platforms are built. Um, you know, I've been hearing a lot lately from the administration uh, and from the Congress about new initiatives that um, basically targets uh, fighting the fundamental reason why we have extremism in the first place. Uh, one of these fundamental uh, issues that we have in the Middle East is um, economical uh, challenges. You know, education and so on and so forth. How much do you think your organization and the work that you guys do helps in countering extremism and the roots of extremism? Well, it, it, where, that's a complex question, as you know, and, and, and certainly uh, uh, we've got many of examples of where it continues to become more complex. Where Millennium Challenge Corporation can, can be effective on behalf of the U.S. government is uh, we work in some very difficult places, emerging places, and with partner governments who have a desire to do some real reforms on, uh, uh, again, places where consistency and uh, I'll call them efficiency has to happen for uh, just society at large to be able to function appropriately, mm -hmm. either living conditions, education-wise, situations. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say to you also that that is an important piece of this, is that these compacts allow for the frank discussions with foreign leaders on the issues that you're, that you're speaking about, because uh, uh, they exist even in the countries that, that we're doing business in. Yes. Uh, in, in certain areas. Exactly. I mean, I want to mention that Georgia and Tunisia are, you know, majority Muslim countries. Um, women role is essential in driving the economy, like you mentioned earlier. Um, what do you, uh, what was your assessment of women in, in these issues, areas, and um, how much do you think that the work of uh, the Millennium Challenge Corporation has affected and improved the chances of women uh, in, in their work, um, you know, in the future uh, in the workplace in these countries. It is such an important issue. It's part of the reason I wanted to serve in this administration uh, is because it, 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 being a professional woman myself and, uh, and again, uh, the, the background that I have. I, I will give you the example of Indonesia. I had the opportunity to review uh, what was our compact work in Indonesia, which uh, is a largely Muslim country as well. And they had identified a, uh, a national crisis, if you will, uh, which is a term called stunting. And mm -hmm. it's uh, malnutrition, uh, that is happening amongst their most vulnerable population, small children and infants, mm -hmm. is not getting the right access to food, not having the right access to even uh, the education of how to uh, properly uh, nourish and feed your children and so forth. And to the extent that they, they identified it as a word stunting, uh, mm -hmm. they have a, a, a national priority around it. So Millennium Challenge went in and designed programs with the government that uh, we're able to go through 5,400 villages, not people, but villages, villages. with a programmatic um, uh, approach to nutrition. Mm -hmm. And the, it included uh, once a month uh, 
health clinic, village health clinics are called Pashiantus, but mm -hmm. they're basically your village health clinic and mm -hmm. bringing your children, weighing, measuring, the same way that we would do with our children as yes. a pediatrician. And I, are they growing properly? Are they eating properly? Educating on uh, mm -hmm. what kinds of foods are important and so forth and improving the growth rate. Uh, yes. among. Now, that's a health and nutrition issue, which is uh, hugely important in the kind of uh, participate in uh, other did, parts of uh, being able to, there were salt farms that were uh, turned into businesses and being able to weigh and measure and get to market goods and services and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and the majority of them were both women initiated, uh -huh. women owned, all the way through the supply chain. The majority chain. of them. Yes, especially yes. in the salt farming. Yeah. And, uh, and, and do you do that systematically? And it was done systematically. Yes. And so those results of being able to be inclusive of things that could take women out of their uh, current situation and into a place where they can uh, design and conduct business and, mm -hmm. and become part of the economy of their country. It, it was and, and that's strong. very needed, I think, in so many other countries as well. Um, the challenge comes, you know, another challenge that people ask about here is like, when is that this money, this hope, this uh, work that an organization such as yours is doing could be um, done in, with the wrong partner or with the wrong government? An example was the Syrian regime, for example, who was, uh, along with Russia, asking for American funding, American aid to rebuild, quote unquote, returning of refugees and so on and so forth. How do you think that your organization basically, uh, you know, puts um, or, or can make sure that in the process of making this great work, great initiatives, not helping an evil regime somewhere? Such as it, it's, the situation in Syria. That's right. It's it, it's so, it's such an important uh, determiner, and, and as as we all see, the conditions in the world uh, can change, and sometimes they can change quite ra rapidly. Uh, Millennium Challenge Corporation. Again, we have a constraints analysis, and we ask the the partner government to be able to contribute to the compacts and identify their priorities. And there's a partnership that occurs. Mm -hmm. That's that's an important vehicle to, to start and to continue the conversation, yes. to go into the country. Uh, afterwards, uh, there's also monitoring and evaluation because we assume we're going to have success and some, some of it is highly successful, some of it can be refined along the way, and be eligible for uh, a, a next compact. But one of the important points of the design uh, is that when projects are designed, the money is uh, uh, obligated from the U.S. Treasury to the actual the contractor uh, to have a direct linkage to, to the, the results. Yes, is it's it's part of the way that Millennium Challenge works. Mm -hmm. But you, to you your, buy you buy cut the governments to the uh, private owned companies who are basically uh, conducting your projects on the ground. That's right, and yeah. they they. Um, there's a partnership that occurs there, but mm -hmm. it, I think the point therein is that uh, it sets up for a more honest conversation mm -hmm. uh, about what what is this intended to do, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, such that the the funds follow the results. Mm -hmm. And it, it is by no means foolproof because, it, as you said, conditions change. Mm -hmm. um, uh, countries and pressures change and regimes change and so forth but there's a there's a careful evaluation and monitoring mm -hmm. to make sure um, that uh, this is incented to get the reforms to necessary. the right people that's right but you wanted to say another point about like a situation like Syria for example you um, did you want to add something about that well it, it it's Syria in particular of course is it is it, it, it a very difficult situation uh, with the conflicts and the even the basic human rights issues that are uh, that emanate from that is uh, we we also work in uh, countries that uh, have gone through uh, conflict and regime changes mm -hmm. I'll, I'll uh, give the example of Togo which was mm -hmm. recently it's a threshold mm -hmm. it's a very small investment but the point therein is where 
where there's some foundation for um, strong leadership, that's, what that's where we fit. And exactly. Again, that's where we fit. We, our mission is not in a place, uh, for instance, uh, like Syria at this point in time. We would hope uh, when there's stability and, and certain um, uh, progress there on behalf of all people and mm -hmm. certainly the Syrians that mm -hmm. uh, there be a time and a place for our, our, our help. Your work and, and I hope so and I hope to see that happening and, and I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us today and I really wish you the best of luck on your uh, great work. Thank you. Thank you so much Gary.